about 30 minutes. Yep, we're, we're already like uh, four minutes behind schedule. Sometimes it takes players 
uh, to get some years behind them before they really understand and appreciate what you all are doing for them, regardless if they're six uh, or 16 or 26, uh, male or female. You're all making a, a, a great contribution, and, and, and uh, um, we have to, in, 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 I believe anyways, uh, in addition to making these kids and the people we coach better players, we need to make them uh, and help them grow into better people. And, and we've got that influence. And I think uh, listening to Ben and uh, Vanderklok in his presentation, it's still, there's a guy in the National Hockey League, and one of his core values is to help the people that he coaches become better people. And uh, doing a simple thing like giving a little bit of food for the food bank makes a, makes a, a great difference. And as you move forward in your coaching this year, all I'm going to do with this part is just encourage you to not only think about ways you can help develop your players become better players, but figure out maybe a way that you can help your team that you coach and the players on that team become better people, help their community, uh, um, because uh, uh, we, we all benefit from, from that, from having better people. And to have such an opportunity to influence that, I think, is a great privilege Right, that we all that we all share. Uh, the other thing I want to do is make you make everybody here think, challenge you a little bit, prepare differently. I want to give you all the answers about offensive play today. What I'd like you to do, and of course, you know, you come to something like this, you want to leave with one or two ideas that that you're going to you know help you in your season ahead. But but just think a little bit differently. Uh, again, listening to Vanderklok's presentation about Bolter, one of the things that sticks out in my mind is is how he talked about you know, with the Bolters. He talked about sealing the bottom first, sealing the ice surface first in terms of making saves. And, and the first thing I thought of when he said that, I thought of my presentation. Well, well <clears throat> listening to how the goaltenders are taught to make saves and play up situations. Your, your offensive thinking, right? Our offensive thinking needs to take that into, right? If they're sealing off the ice immediately, right? Where do we need to get our players to put the puck? Upstairs. Upstairs. Ben Boudreaux's presentation, right? Talking about gap control. Well, what's offensively, right? If we're, if the gap and space is being taken away, what are we doing offensively to create that gap or take advantage of the ice that, that, that's available because that defender closed up on it? So um, I was never a good enough player skill-wise to play power play, uh, but I understood the power play, which allowed me to be a good penalty killer right? and, and, and a good defensive player. I just wasn't good enough to execute offensively, but I found it a niche on the defensive side as a player. So as a coach, thinking offensive plays, we move on, or any area of the game, sometimes you gotta just kind of step back, take a look on the other side of the puck, right? Know what's happening on the other side of the puck and the objectives on that side, the defensive side, for example, and then that can dictate some of the things you teach on the offensive side, or vice versa. Right? So, uh, we want to score more goals in the game. I was always also thinking through Ben and Clark's uh, presentation was, if we just eliminated people like Ben Van der Klock out of the game, right? there'd be a lot more offense. <laughs> you know, we're always talking about making the nets bigger or widening the ice. Let's just get rid of the goal coaches. <laughs> we won't do that. So, uh, entertain and be informative. Of course, I don't know if I can follow Rick Gurney and do as good a job as he did there, but uh, I'll do my best. We've got to have fun, hockey's a great game. And I want to meet somebody new. If it's something in one of these settings, I always try to do that, and I think I've already met a couple people along the way. So I'm already well on my way. So seeds for offensive play. What are some things we can think about as coaches uh, to help our players, help our team, right, uh, create more offense and generate more offense? Well, you know, in order to win, you need to score. At the end of the day, you still got to score goals to win hockey games, right? In order to score, you need to create chances, right? In order to create chances, your team needs the puck, right? And, the need, and needs to play in the opponent's end of the ice. Pretty simple statement. Try to flash it up there with a little bit of color to wake you up in the mid-afternoon, right? I like that, I like that. But essentially, right, uh, you need the puck right, to create offense. So 
where can we teach offense in the game, right? Uh, Benny Boudreau talked about, you know, getting to the middle of the ice. Where do you want to be? Where's the best place to, with, to, to shoot the puck, to score a goal from? Of course, the slot, Phil Esposito would tell you that. A uh, number of players uh, in today's game would tell you that. But there's other areas around the ice that we can, that we can uh, uh, take advantage of as coaches and teach uh, plays, teach tactics in those areas of the ice, right, to create some offense. Behind the net is a big, uh, uh, is an area that I just read on, uh, on the coach's site, I don't know if, uh, if, if many, I'm sure many of you guys have, have uh, followed that a little bit. There's, a, ironically, a great uh, piece this week on creating offense down low, below uh, the goal line, right? Uh, below the dots in the offensive zone. Off the rush is an area we can create offense. Saw some of those clips, right, in, in Ben Boudreaux's presentation and Ben Vanderklok's as well. Uh, transition, change of possession, uh, creating offense from good defense, right? Uh, transition with your goalie, which is something that we've, we've quietly tried to implement the, the last couple of years with, uh, with our team, is uh, defending in a way that um, giving up some outside shots, some low percentage shots, so that we can gain possession off a save from our goaltender. So using our goalie for, for offensive transition. Uh, this is a big one, engaging defensemen in all three zones. Getting defensemen involved offensively. Letting them know, um, you know, I, I'm a big, I love Chicago's philosophy in the last five, eight years, right? That back end they had where, yeah, they had a couple big, solid defensive D men, but, but and the Duncan Keese and, and Jarmelson helping out and, and, and Seabrook. Um, how about our back end for the Olympics uh, in, uh, just a couple years ago was fantastic, right? Engage five, engage your, 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 your defenseman in all three zones. Five men on offense, five men on offense. Uh, Van der Klok mentioned this, low percentage angle shots, so placing shots, right, uh, on the goaltender to create second opportunities, right? Uh, there's, a, there's a stat out there, uh, I'm sure Wes knows it, uh, or I think Nick made the reference it to me. You know, you, your first shot on net has, has this percentage opportunity to go in. If that shot creates a second opportunity, you've got this much better chance of scoring the goal. If that second opportunity leads to a, a third scoring chance, chances are it's going in the net. So, Shooting to create opportunities and create up, uh, uh, goals, chances. Uh, this is a big area we'll talk a little bit about today too. Is, is and I think in the next uh, element, next uh, uh, stage of offensive play uh, at, at, the, at the highest levels of and, and, and filtering down is puck recovery, falling shots. Right? We all know about Corsi and Fenwick and high shot counts and shot volume. Well, not all those shots are going in the net. A lot of them, if you listen to Vanderklok, are getting steered to the corner, etc. Well, recovering those pucks and creating an opportunity off those shots as well. So not just shots that end up around the crease, but shots that are directed to other areas of the, of the zone. It's just a matter of recovering the puck back, right? Can we create a plan? And, and create uh, plays off those situations where we're recovering those plays. Of course, power play, penalty killing, special teams are areas where we can create offense and teach offense. Um, even PK, like I, I think, I think we got to look at opportunities, times where we can create offense, even though we're shorthanded, right? Maybe it's off a face-off. Maybe it's off a, a you know midway through a power play where that power play units changing and we gain possession of the puck on the penalty kill. Why aren't we thinking scoring then if we have the puck and there's open ice? Let's take advantage of that. Face-offs is another area, offensive zone face-offs in particular, where we can be running plays, generating plays, and create quick strike scoring opportunities. All right. Um, there's other areas as well. Any, anybody got, anybody want to fill in one of the question marks? For, for other areas to create offense? 
Must be late in the day. Everybody, <coughs> things are slowing down. Four on four. Four on four, certainly a scenario, for sure. Anything else? Run the goal. What's that? Run the goal. Run the goal. Run the goal. <laughs> yeah, get you in prison nowadays. <laughs> Anything else in terms of offensive play? Where else can we teach offensive play? Out of the defensive zone. Certainly out of the defensive zone. Certainly quick, quick breaks off. Of uh, where Belzy talked about practicing breaking out of the zone off the defensive face off. What about a quick strike off the off the uh, uh, off that breakout? Right. We saw in the last Olympics, I think it was our good friend Teddy Nolan with the Latvian team. Yeah. Right. Created a, a great opportunity off a neutral zone face off where you know slipped one guy in the bench at this guy and sent the guy out the door at the other and gained maybe five meters of ice but create a scoring opportunity. So think about, uh, we want to be able to leave here and think about how we're teaching the game offensively and maybe there's some other ways we can add some wrinkles to, to how we do it. So these are all based on some, some offensive principles, right, that guide our offensive play, obviously puck possession and management. There we're talking about offensive zone time and plays in the offensive zone, certainly entries, which is a uh, <clears throat> last several years, and you hear all the time, you know, Kiva West talked about entering the offensive zone with possession, right? Um, numerical support, again, fit five men on, on offense. Ben Boudreau had a couple of fantastic <laughs> offensive rushes there where they had their defensemen uh, joining and creating a, uh, an extra man on that, on that rush. Pressure, uh, this is talking about a change of speed and changing the point of attack. Uh, always trying to, you know, creating a scoring opportunity may not necessarily result immediately in a goal at that point in time, but it may put your opponent on their heels a little bit. We all know that, that we hear that word momentum. The momentum was with us. Momentum was against us. What the hell is that? Well, it's you. You can't see it. You, you, you can't. You can't feel it, right? But you know when you got it, and you know when you don't. That's the pressure that you're trying to create offensively. So, offensive pressure may create three chances, right? Maybe it's the fourth or the fifth opportunity, right? That gets you that goal. All right. Transition. Talked a little bit about that before. Change of possession. Right in all three zones, I mentioned about utilizing the goaltender, even, even off a shot in your own zone, in the defensive zone, to create a, a rush opportunity. Our team, the last couple of years, really good off the rush, creating offense. We needed the puck, right? And that was one of the ways we got the puck, we got moving up ice, and certainly shot recovery again. So where do we start? We go back, you know, a couple slides here. There's a lot of areas and we can't go over them all today. So I thought we'd talk about three three areas, right? One, face-offs, right? Creating some plays off offensive zone face-offs. I'll show you a clip here that we've used. Um, there's a number of, of different plays you can set up and generate uh, quick strike opportunities in the offensive zone off a of face-off. Uh, all you got to do is go to YouTube and type that in, and you'll, you'll find all kinds, right? But think about offense. Uh, don't don't just have an offensive zone face-off just to start the play again. Every time you have an offensive zone face-off, think of it as an opportunity to create that chance. Think of it as that opportunity to get pressure put on the opponent. Okay? Shot placement. We'll talk a little bit about that, and shot recovery as well. So face-offs, this is something your players will love. And uh, um, uh, we even did this four or five years ago. We started a spring program called the Brock Future Badges, where we were working with an 03 group of players from all over Niagara. One of our things that we wanted to achieve during that month or six weeks of season was, uh, of a season was uh, get the kids to understand <coughs> that concept of creating offense off an offensive zone face off. We worked like dogs <laughs> to get it done. It took us three years to get a goal off the offensive zone face, but we got it. So uh, as I said, you said, the last bullet point here, there's no fast forward button. Sometimes it's just got to be repetition. 
Uh, but your players will love it, right? Because it gives them, you know, it gives them a, a sense of purpose. It gives them a, a, a responsibility, right? And it gives them a chance to score. And any player loves that. So uh, create face-offs in games. We call them grenades. I don't know if this is common with everybody here, but uh, we will use it occasionally. A couple years ago, we used it relentlessly in a playoff run, and, and it worked great for us, where we would, off the rush, if we couldn't access the offensive zone with possession, our goal was to send the puck to the net. Get it to bounce right in around the hash mark area in the slot. So now the goaltender's got to play a bouncing puck. In addition to that, whoever the forwards were that didn't send the puck in, their job was to beeline for the blue paint at the crease. Right? If there was a loose puck, play it, pounce on it, try to score. The worst case scenario is they freeze the puck. Well, they freeze the puck, leads to an offensive zone face off. Right? We were having good success in the playoff circle. Right? Uh, uh, a couple of our centermen were running high 50% winning percentage in the offensive zone led to some scoring opportunities. I, I, I can't recall if it led to a goal, but it led to putting the opponent under pressure. Right? It led to some offensive <coughs> So uh, if we couldn't get it in and create that chance off the rush, we decided that we would create off the face off and had some success. So let's have a day out there in the moment. Uh, keep it simple, face offs, keep it, but define everybody's role. <coughs> Right? You got five guys on the ice in the offensive zone. Whatever play you run, everybody's going to have a, uh, have a part to play in it. They've got to commit to it. Sometimes one of those five players might have to be a decoy. But as coach, you got to sell the fact that being a decoy is the most important part of the entire play. Okay, so everybody's role is important there, and it has to be uh, uh, defined. Of course, practice it over over and over and over again. At the university level, we have the luxury of being on the ice every day of the week, uh, much like Belgian team and, and, and junior teams. I know minor hockey teams don't necessarily have that, but you can run it outside, you can run it on the ball, hockey rink, you can run it on the field, right? You, you have opportunities to practice. Uh, how many in what zones? Uh, we heard someone mention about the defensive zone for sure. A quick strike off of the defensive zone face off. Certainly, obviously, the offensive zone. And Teddy Nolan proved to us that you can run an offensive, like an offensive opportunity off of neutral zone face off as well. So, I mean, uh, Nick, can I have you here up for the video part of this? Uh, so, much, much like. Uh, this is not quite NHL standard video, as you say, the, the budget of the university. <coughs> but it's just slightly below the American League, just slightly below, and just a little bit above Well and House League. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, uh, th this, is, uh, this is from a couple of years ago. It's three clips. Um, the first clip here, and we, we structured this purposely to, to, uh, for something like this, right? What's going to happen here is you'll see uh, the winger on the wall off this draw. Oops. The winger on the wall is going to end up sliding in behind into the slot and will receive the puck for a shot. Um, uh, centerman wins the draw back, jumps through. Um, the uh, Net front winger here should be sliding across in behind our defenseman. The net front D or the, the slot D here will slide across the blue line, um, and the, the D man here right, will be looking to find that winger in the slot that's coming up. So just a bounce, you know, off movement. And this is a this is a play you can certainly run pretty much with any age group. Uh, you got to make the play. It's got to make the Sometimes with the younger kids, we found with our future badge didn't always happen as much as it does with our. So um, let's just run that first, the first clip here, and you'll see the movement of our players. And then you have to pause it right away. Okay, fire uh, Just use the the mouse. You should find an arrow there to the bottom of that screen. You should come to. Uh, Down below there is a, is that, is that a play button? Slide. 
first to the computer that you made it on, like it was linked to that file, probably wouldn't work on my computer. Is, is, uh, is it in PowerPoint form? Like the whole presentation? Do you hit the escape button there? Can you, can you play it when you're not in presentation mode? No. Yeah, it's probably linked to the file on, on your computer. Okay, yeah. That's bad.
make the passes, right? They didn't always complete that pass across, but they, they were getting their routes. And then two years later, we got the puck on that. <laughs> It's 10 years, I think. <laughs> so that's just a simple play uh, off offense that you, that you can create. You get Centerman in there like Kanaka that I saw come in, right? You're, you're, you're going to create the scoring chance for sure because he would be on the upper end of, of, of possession on the draw. So uh, offensive zone uh, face off, there's all kinds of opportunities. How are we for time? We're doing okay. Yeah, still got to go. I'll give you one other example of face off. And, and be as creative, and this is the part I go back to think a little differently. Be as creative as you want, right? You're in the offensive zone, right? Don't, don't be reckless. But we, we had a game, we were in Thunder Bay. Matt Abercrombie was a great junior hockey player in this area for Floral. He played for us for four years or whatever. He's still playing in Germany. Great offensive instincts. He understood the game. Do a lot with Matt Abercrombie. Because as, as Rick had mentioned about buy-in, Matt Abercrombie all in. And he loved this kind of stuff. So we were in Thunder Bay playing Lakehead. We now Lakehead's a, a, a unique place for, for Ontario universities because they, they, they get 3,000 people most games and it's, it's a little bit of a crazy place to play well, never mind win. So we ran a little play um, that we didn't really even practice this. We just kind of talked about it. And when you got, you know, buying from, got it from your leaders like, like Matt Abercrombie, you could run it. So this was just, this was a tap through play. So all we asked Matt to do was set our wing, all four, we had four guys kind of on the blue line, right? Which nobody's, nobody's seen that. We didn't know what we were doing. But Matt's job here was to sell that he was bringing the puck back to one of the four guys. He didn't matter. But even in his setup going into the dock, he had to position his body, his hips, his stick, verbally talk to the guys on the blue line, um, selling the fact that he was bringing the puck back. On the drop of the puck, he tapped it through the centerman, his feet, grabbed it again right here, shot short, short side, hit the crowd. Bar and went up over the glass in the crowd. 3,000 people, it was dead side. <laughs> they didn't know what they just saw. But it goes back to that pressure part all of a sudden. Right? And, and the pressure part started before the shot. Because as we got set up like this, what do you think the five Lakehead guys were doing? Like, they were scrambling. Nobody knew who was going where, who had whom. Who was going to go? The centerman couldn't go in to take the draw. The linesman yelling at the guy to get into the dot. Through all that confusion, Matt was able to create a, a, a play. The, the end of the story, I should have changed the end of the story and said we scored. <laughs> <laughs> but did he at least win the game? We won that game. Oh, yeah, and then, and then the next day we had to play again, and I think everybody in Thunder Bay had a little meeting. Yeah. And we didn't win the second game. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a uh, face-off play for you. Uh, so shot placement. Um, so this is a little bit, think a little bit in terms of, of what you heard from Ben Vanderklok earlier in the day, right? And uh, so we all, we've heard about Corsi and, and shot volume. More shots, he, you know, is a measurement of possession. And, um, you know, ends up being more shots. Like whether you, you you totally buy into that or not, the, the basic concept is in today's game there, there's a theme of more pucks being sent to the net. Okay, uh, and it, it's not really any different than you know my Adam coach in 1975 saying, as Ben said, there's never a bad shot. Right, you got nothing to throw it on them. But in today's game, right, the, how good a job people like Ben Vanderklok and Jason Barron do with goaltenders, right? It, you need another step. So it's not just about putting the pucks on net. It's like, what are you doing offensively after putting the puck to the net? So uh, what can you do? So shot off the dash, and you guys have probably seen this, right? Or, or if you haven't, right, it's, 
you know, you're yelling at your uh, defense, well, why is he shooting it wide? Can't he hit the net? Well, no, there's, there's, it's a common play, right? To send that puck off to the side of him, off the dasher board, right? And get a bounce back uh, to the area above the goal line. Where, you, where now you're creating that pressure point and that, and that opportunity, right? Uh, I don't know if you know, if you remember some of the clips Ben had, you see all the people in the shooting lanes, like there's just, there's no room. Like you, it's hard to get that, that puck through to the net. So sometimes you gotta get it past the shoot, the blockers, and create that opportunity. So shot off the dash is a great way to put pressure. The other thing it does, it forces all the defenders to do what? The puck goes past them, what do they automatically do? Turn around. Turn around. Now the shooters are behind them, so they lose coverage. So again, applying, creating pressure situations. The far pad shot is a great one. I mean, I'm sure we see it all the time on a two-on-one uh, between goaltenders and, and we, we try to sell this far pad shot as, you know, in fact, it tells us it's not a two-on-one, right? You gotta include the goaltender. It's actually a two-on-two, so it's, that makes it that much tougher. So, uh, you know, you have your, your two attackers. If you're not able to get a pass across, which is tough to do with defensemen taking passing lanes away, or going down on the ice, right, and forcing, if you're gonna make that pass, you gotta loft it over a sprawling defenseman, tough play to finish, even in the National Hockey League. So what about using that far pad shot to create that rebound and, and the other offensive player uh, getting on? We had, uh, I mean, it's a few years ago we played. St. Mary's here, uh, they just come off a national championship. They're playing here in our Steel Blade tournament, a preseason tournament. And uh, we played them in the, in, the, in the round robin portion. They scored a goal exactly like that. We spent our Saturday off, our team, because it was an off day for us, had to play St. Mary's in the final on the Sunday and turn and use that clip in preparation for the Sunday game and actually scored a goal in the final the exact same way. So it was, it was nice to, to get back up. Um, so uh, for bad angle shots, and I heard, heard Ben Vanderklok actually call bad angle shots. So again, in tight, right? Air goaltenders are taking that bottom on the ice surface away, right? If you can't get it up under the bar, and if you're right on the blue paint, man, maybe it's off the blocker and create, forcing that goaltender to move and open up, right? Uh, not all, they're not all Peke Rennies where they keep everything tight, right? What you're trying to do is just create some space, right, through that goaltender with a second shot. So it's, again, it's not all about putting that first shot to the net. It's about the end, the end game being that second shot. Deflections outside home plate. And I noticed this in one of Benny's uh, uh, clips as well. Um, so we, you know, we've all kind of uh, used, I'm sure, used the home plate kind of, the home plate, uh, there for the slot area. So uh, uh, Greg and I were actually in Buffalo yesterday watching the, the development camp there and they were doing some really good deflection drills and, and what we talked about, a lot of players, right, it's natural to get in front of that goaltender, you know, if the shot's coming from here, you know, be prepared to, to, to make that, that deflection or that tip. What, what you may want to utilize with some of your players is get them to recognize Maybe the deflection point is out here, right? So you're not you're not shooting into the deflection. You're actually shooting outside and deflecting into the blue paint, as opposed to directly at the blue paint, trying to get it upstairs or through the goal. So again, just okay, taking a, 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 a an offensive concept, deflections, screens, deflections, and just reposition yourself where that, where that point of attack would be. Uh, Luke Lawson, our goaltender coach, and, and was with the Ice Dogs a, a couple years ago as well, has a great presentation on screens and deflections, ways to score off screens and deflections. Okay? And if you're taking notes with what Ben Vanderklok was saying, the 
about how goaltenders, right, are reading and strategizing against that play, right, you now have to find, a, knowing that, right, adjust your offensive focus, right, so that the goaltender has to readjust. Okay, hope that makes sense. Uh, and the other one was Royal Road. Has anybody, has anybody heard of that term, the Royal Road? It's fairly common, right? So the Royal Road is a, is a term I think people are, are tagging with Steve Ballack, had a former, actually I had him as a goaltender in Sudbury before I came to Brock, and had a good pro career, and uh, I think he's in, in coaching now. But it, you know, he, 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 did, he collected data and found Basically, what it is is any pa any shot that's generated from a pass across basically an area down the middle of the ice here, which he called the Royal Road, right? It significantly increases your opportunity to score. I don't I don't think it's rocket science, right? It makes sense if your goaltender's focused on Frank Gurney because he's got the puck, and Frank passes it over to Rick. The goaltender's got to shift his focus, open up, right? There's an element of time still that it takes to go from Frank, right, to the shooter that offensively you want to take advantage of that time. So passes, and we saw some clips from Boudreaux's and then, of course, Ben's, where there are multiple passes across. Benny used it to show saves, right? <laughs> right? But you could take similar clips and show score goals scored all the time. I mean, how many times do we see Alexander Ovechkin get a pass from here to him, and it's up under the bottom? Right? Probably half of the goals he scores, maybe. Right? So uh, the Royal Road has uh, an opportunity there uh, for shot placement as well. Any questions on that? So shot placement is a strategy. It's just not throwing pucks to the net. It's putting pucks on the net with a purpose. And so it's either, you know, when, when that first shot, it either goes in and you score, right? The goaltender saves it and there's a face off, or you're creating a second shot. So shot placement is something you gotta think about even with, your, with kids. Uh, the third area, shot recovery. So it's a little different, uh, but again, it still sh deals with shot volume. We started to introduce a bit of this this year in our season early. Um, and essentially, it's this, right? So uh, we were a pretty good team off the rush, right? Getting pucks to the net. But if you, again, if, if you're not scoring off that initial shot, the goaltender may be saving it, and there's a whistle, um, or you know there's a net rebound, or that puck's being deflected into the corner, right? And if you you know, again, listening to Vander Klok's goaltending presentation, right, it's either being frozen or, you know, they're, they're being told not to leave anything around the blue paint, right? Um, so put pressure on that goaltender, but that shot, more than likely, if, he's, if it's not being frozen for a face-off, is going to be put into an open area of the ice. So again, if, if it's not going in and there's not a face-off, What's the next step? So the, the, the shot recovery is a, it, it, it think about ways, strategies, where you can recover that puck right? and quickly generate a pressure situation for, for an offensive chance. Um, think of it this way, uh, off the rush, right? Shot goes in, puck comes into this corner. The back checkers, right? And almost to a man, you can guarantee all five defenders if they're back hard, they're, they will all flow to the puck side. Right? Some of them will stop where they need to be, but they will, they, they will definitely cut that ice in half. I think we even heard Ben Boudreaux talk about cutting the ice in half. So where can we quickly attack? Where can we situate our offensive players to take advantage positioning of the defenders, the fact that we now have the puck again. We just had a great rush, shot on net, now we've recovered the puck. Well, it's, it's two areas really, right? You either bring it up here, right? Or, preferably, the weak, 
the weak side. And then it's, you know, who's, where do we go from there to create our, our next offensive opportunity. So within seconds of that rush and that shot on them, which we want, right, that doesn't beat the goaltender, doesn't create an offensive zone face-off for us, our next, next offensive task is to recover that puck and then create the offensive opportunity from there. Knowing what are the tendencies of the defenders, where the, old, where we, where the open ice is, and where we can take advantage of that open ice. Okay. Um, so that, that kind of sums up uh, uh, um, you know, shot recovery off the rush. Uh, I got NESN, North uh, New England Sports Network, which is just a kind of a, it's just puck movement, right? So in the offensive zone, right, again, we want, we want to try and generate putting the defenders under pressure by getting them outside of their coverage zones or coverage areas, losing their coverage. So we always talk about going north in hockey, right? North is to the opponent's net here. So puck movement where we go, you know, North with the puck, right? East behind the net. You know, south to the D and then north again to the net, right? Three passes that force the defenders to completely uh, 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 adjust almost in a 360 degree radius as to where the next, where the coverage is, where their guy is. So change the point of attack uh, is real important. Offensive zone plays where we're caught, not caught, but we're down low on offense here. And we know, you know there's a lot of overload defending now. Where, you know, if the puck's down low on, in one corner, you'll find five defensive players in that cor corner of the ice. So where, where can you go with the puck? Well, what we've, what we've used successfully is the weak side of a hard rim where our D releases and, and meets that puck, right? We release our forward, our high forward, into a shooting position. And as that puck comes through, we can create a quick strike opportunity. So it's about creating offense depending on where the defenders are again. So if they're overloading, how can we get the puck to the weak side? Who's getting it? And what's he doing with it? That needs to be mapped out for your players, right? You map that out, and you can create some, some opportunities off the play like that. Um, Three-man roll up top. Uh, see a lot of this now as well, and it's really come into play since years ago when they shrunk that neutral zone. Now that offensive blue line is a long ways away <coughs> from the tops of the circles, but uh, just off cycles, right, where cycle drive through our D, right, where we have an opportunity where our forward can actually carry right up to the blue line. We stretch our D across and we create almost three lanes of attack while our two other forwards remain low. Right? So if we move that puck to the middle, Danny Boudreau talked about that middle ice area, we've got the opportunity to send pucks low, Right? We've got the opportunity to, to move it, just throw us an attack, but, but one of three lanes. Where this is effective is coverage down low. Well, you normally have, your opponent will normally have two wingers up top covering the 2D. You get your, you get that third four way up on the blue line. Who's, who's covering that guy? Again, you just, even if it's momentarily loss of coverage, that's all you need is the space. You've now created the space and the time to take advantage of that situation offense. Okay, so that would be a three-man roll up top. And again, the, the bad angle shot, we, we, we talked a bit about that and, and through uh, Vanderklok's reference as well. So shot recovery, generate possession and another shot attempt as soon as possible. So seeds for offensive play. My goal here, to think back, right, was to get you to kind of think a little bit differently about ways to generate offense. Um, hopefully a couple things you pull out of that. If you leave here with one thing, that'd be great. Um, but I think that for me, and, and, and in a, uh, a setting like this, 
And I really appreciate everybody taking the day to uh, to, to come. And as Rick Gurney said early this morning, like this is it's kind of like coming to Sunday church, but we're at the rink, right? Uh, so it's all good. We're all, we're all we're all going where we need to go. Uh, seats for offensive play. Sometimes it's a good thing to stand away from the canvas time to time, time to time, take the full view of the picture. So we think offensively like this, right? Sometimes if we can just step back, see how it fits in the entire game, you realize there's there's multiple ways to generate offense in our game. Just gotta think of who we're coaching, what can best fit their 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 game, what they can execute, uh, and have some fun with it as well. Okay. So that's my uh well, I was finishing with uh, just some photos that I found. Some, some of the great scoring players in the game today um, and the future. Okay. You guys, uh, not knowing everybody here, what level you're coaching, um, but uh, uh, I, I think uh, you've got an opportunity to really influence the game from an offensive standpoint. Uh, I know we put a priority on winning, and if they didn't keep score, uh, uh, that, that, that's, that's why they keep score, because whoever wins, it does matter. It does matter. Otherwise, don't keep score. Um, but we've got to continue to develop and, and challenge and, uh, and bring our next uh, generation of great offensive players, who some of you in this room may be coaching right now, Right to the forefront. So think a little differently with, with the group that you have. Um, take whatever information you, you found today and take those next steps in your upcoming season uh, to, to, to help your, your players improve. And as Wes said, the results will, will take care of themselves.